Good morning, everybody. This is uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good morning or good afternoon. I don't know where you are in the day when you're watching this, but I want you to see this. Let me get a little closer here. Look at the back of this thing. It's extremely rusty. Hello! Welcome back to All Things Gumball. Um, I'm going to do something a little different today. So anyway, today I want to work on this little project. This is the base of one of my vending machines, and I'm trying to see if I can... I'm trying to see if I can restore it. It's all rusted out. And the reason it's so rusty is because when the people that work in the building, when they clean the floors, they mop the floors, and they may not be wringing out the mop very well, but they'll mop the floor and then they'll leave the floor soaking wet and then they just put the vending machine back where it was and it sits on top of water and then it may dry overnight a couple hours. So this thing sits in water for a couple of hours and it's rusting and I want to see if I can restore it. Uh, it may not be back to its former glory, but we're going to give it a shot. We're going to give it a try. Uh, let me show you a few things here. Now I've tried several... Okay, I've tried several different ways of dealing with problems like this because this is not the first time I've had to deal with this. I don't know if you can see that or not. Look how dirty that is. Look how disgusting that is. When I first started, um, the first thing I did, <coughs> when I first started, uh, sorry, when I first started trying to fix this problem, I went off and got my, I got me some sandpaper, and that just seemed like it took forever. And I thought at that rate, I'm gonna be here for 24 hours working on one base. I tried steel wool, that's even worse. So you have all kinds of products that you can use that you clean your uh, kitchen, you know, your dishes with. These are really good for cleaning your pots and pans, but they don't work on cleaning rusty parts. I even tried using this paint thinner here. The problem is the paint thinner takes the paint off, but it doesn't get the rust off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand off the rust on this base. Uh, I had a uh, drill. I don't have it anymore. It uh, broke. And I would even try these uh, little spinning wire wheels and that seemed to take forever as well. I would put this in my drill, my electric drill, and it just seemed like it took forever. Um, it just doesn't do the job that you want it to do. Uh, and then I went out and I talked to somebody and he said, get yourself an angle grinder. This is an angle grinder if you don't know what this is. And it's got a uh, sandpaper wheel on it and it does very well. I'm running out of battery, it looks like. It does very well. It's an angle grinder. And it does the job that you want it to do. So that's what we're gonna work on today. We're gonna work on grinding off the paint, sanding it down a little bit, and then painting it. You wanna grind down the, um, the rust and the paint, and then you wanna give it a little tiny sanding at the, at the end, um, just so that, because there's parts here that don't really need to be sanded down, like here. And we're going to sand that, give it a little scratch with sandpaper so that the paint will stick to it. And that's what we're going to do uh, today. Okay? Alright. There's one thing I forgot to tell you. Please wear safety equipment. I don't want the dust to get in your eyes. When the iron, when the iron grinders, uh, I can't even speak. When the iron, when the angle grinder, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. When the angle grinder starts grinding the metal and the paint, you will see chips of paint flying everywhere. Now this is, as far as I've gotten, I did give it a little. Um, I did kind of wipe it off with a little bit of water. 
I don't need these anymore, I'm not working on the angle grinder. Now what I did was it does look a little wet because I ran a little water over the top of it just to kind of get the dust off so I could see what, what's actually happening to the underside and the top side. Uh, as you can see I got a lot of the rust off, I got a lot of the paint off and uh, what you can do is you can kind of rub your hand on the bottom. Now this is the bottom, nobody's really going to see the bottom so I'm going to paint this one black, this side on the bottom black. Uh, and this side I'm going to paint red, but it's hard to match this color. It really is. I've tried different shades and it's really hard, but do the best you can. Uh, feel for any imperfections, any lumps, and that just means there's a little bit of rust underneath. And you don't have to sand everything. Um, and then what you want to do is put a little, uh, right here you want to rub a little bit of sandpaper here because it's going to be very glossy and the paint won't stick as well. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to add a little, uh, or rub it with a little bit of, what we're going to do right here is we're going to rub it with a little bit of sandpaper just to kind of rough it up. When you're done sanding it with the paper, you're going to have to uh, wash it a wash it off again to get all the powder off all the sandpaper powder and I don't have my glasses on so put my glasses on this grit by the way is uh, 60 grit it's a 60 I don't know if you can read that that says 60 on there Once you're done sanding it, you're going to kind of feel for imperfections. You can take a little paper towel like this one and kind of rub the powder off. You can see the paint getting on the paper towel. And you want to just feel for any bumps, any little irregularities. And that'll tell you that there's rust underneath. If it doesn't feel smooth, then it means there's a little bit of rust underneath the paint. It's hiding. There might be a little pinprick that pricked through the paint and then water got in that little hole and uh, there's rust underneath the paint but everything feels smooth right here everything feels good okay so we're gonna paint this now all right now uh, keep in mind that when you're sanding the um, when you're sanding the base you want to be very um, cautious it will kick dust everywhere it will throw a powdery residue everywhere so if you could do it in a garage or outside in the backyard and then again when we paint the base you want to do it in a well ventilated area you don't want to do it inside of a house you want to be outside in a garage make sure both doors are open if there's two doors to the garage and just be in a well ventilated area if it's very windy the paint is going to go flying when the wind is blowing and it may not stick to the machine it may not stick to the base so make sure that you're in a very you want to be well ventilated, but you don't want it to be windy, blowing the paint before it hits the base, if that makes sense. Okay? And always make sure you wear goggles. Uh, you don't want your eyes to get damaged. We are finished with the base, and I just wanted to show you what that looks like. It's not perfect. It doesn't look brand new, but it's going to look good. And the thing that I'm not too concerned about is, I mean, the reason I'm not that bothered about the fact that it's not perfect is that it's going to be so low to the ground that people aren't really going to pay much attention to it. I don't know if you can see the color really well. And then what I did on the back side, like I said, I wanted to paint that black. So as you can see, it looks good. It looks good enough to be placed in a very nice business. All right, I hope you enjoy these videos. If you like these videos, please give a thumbs up. And if you really like these videos, please subscribe. And I will catch you on another video. Have a good morning, have a good evening, or have a good afternoon.